Hey, I'm Melinda and welcome to Raining in Majestonia. Looks like no matter where I go, there's gonna be sun. <laughs> this 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 way is not comfortable. <laughs> I just have I just had an argument with a trash bin truck. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> About horse and rider safety. <laughs> And that he needs to slow down. He didn't take it very well. <laughs> anyway, they're smoky. Um, today I thought I would talk about my um, latest experience in horse buying. <laughs> uh, seems like it's mostly brokers in my area that have the horses I'm looking for. Um, you know, I am not, I am an animal rescuer and lover. I don't, you know, I have met chickens, I have met dogs, met cats, met horses. Um, met horses are actually called great. Met horses. I got interrupted, so I'm back on my horse. My horses are actually called grade horses. Um, like Smokey here, he may have been... He may have good blood and stuff, but I don't know, because no one had any papers on him, and so he was sold as grade. Denny was... I forget what he's bred with, but... Um, Denny was not a grade horse, but we, he was called grade when it came to like competitions because I didn't have papers on him. Um, they were, I don't know that they were ever done. You know, it's something you gotta keep up with. So anyway, I'm just looking for a great, a nice horse. Grade or highly bred, I don't care. But one that I can afford and one that's a nice, well broke, stable horse. Um, th this is especially hard to find. You know, I'm riding out here by myself and he's not acting like an idiot because he's by himself. So that's hard to find. Um, when it comes to papers, you can't ride papers. <laughs> Anyway, I have always been partial to Appaloosas. Um, there's this one I've been calling on that's like he's an hour away. No, he's like an hour and 45 minutes away. He's about 105 miles away and he's with a broker. <laughs> I'll rant about brokers later. Anyway, and every time I called on the horse, something changed. Um, about him but he was in line with something I could afford and they had a video of him riding along the road out there by himself so um, I decided finally to go look at him you know one time when I called you could do a vet check another time I called you couldn't do a vet check you know then they don't do shots they don't do Coggins until the horse is sold, this and that, you know. But the last phone call was like, yeah, you'd have a vet check. So I, I decided not being able to have a vet check is just, you know, there's no point in seeing the horse if I can't have a vet check. Um, Anyway, the last phone call, there we could have a vet check. So I went ahead and decided um, to go see this horse. And my husband was not going to go with me originally, but he ended up going in the end. And thankfully, he, thankfully he did. We had some And we got there, and nobody was there. So we decided just to look around, and we were going to go, um, we saw the horses over in our pen, so we decided to go take a walk out and look at him. I had been talking to the older guy. Anyway, this younger guy showed up, which I'm assuming was his son. 
I didn't put his quiet ride fly mask on. You can see how we're riding it now. That's why I'm riding in the street. <laughs> anyway, this younger guy showed up. Smokey, enough! Which I'm assuming was his son. And uh, he's like, can I help you? I said, yeah, I had an appointment to look at the appy. And, and he's like, well, where's your trailer? Um, I said, well, I had an appointment to look at the appy, not to buy the appy. <laughs> so then, I, we could tell he was not please. I'm not going to bring a, whole, a t trailer 100, 110 miles to see a horse that I don't know that I'm going to buy. I'm just not. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a spur of the moment horse buyer. <laughs> so anyway, he, he wasn't happy about that, whatever. Um, so then we went to look at the appy. Uh, he went to go catch him, and Appy kept walking away from him. So then he had to go back to his little cart thing and get something to get around the Appy's neck and get him out from me. So when he brought him over, I'm like, well, oh, I guess he's a little hard to catch. Uh, he didn't like that. Anyway, so then I was asking him about the shots and the cotton and a vet check and he's like oh we don't allow vet check and you know last time we gave him four shots they died it died and i was like well i'm not gonna just bring a horse over to my house that hasn't had shots so can i get the shots will i be able to get them before you yeah <sighs> so as i was looking at the horse i found this wire <laughs> inside the horse's tail. It's like six to eight inch long wire all tangled up in this horse's tail. So I went ahead and started trying to get it out of his tail, you know, working it out. As I was doing that, the guy got up. The guy's like, I can get that later. I'll just get that later. But you don't need to do that. I said, I said, I just want to see how he takes it. So I'm going to get this out. So he wasn't happy about that. <laughs> so then, um, the one thing I've learned lately is don't get on a horse that somebody else isn't going to get on. And I said, uh, so with that, after I was done looking at him and trailing, like, leading him around, and he wasn't acting stupid being away from the herd and everything. He's real nice. Real sweet horse. Um, after I did all that, I was like... I say, well, can you get on him for me? I said, I've learned not to get on a horse that the owner won't get on, and you're not the owner, but you're the one that's here. Um, he's like, well, I don't ride, whatever. I can get somebody. And I was like, okay, go ahead and get somebody. So he, he's like, well, he's in school. And I said, okay. Um, but then he's like, well, I'll just, I'll try and get him. I said, okay. He's like, well, I need to go get a saddle. I was like, okay. You know? <laughs> So then he went and got um, a saddle and came back. And while he was gone, we took pictures of the sports teeth because you can tell the way it's about their teeth. Um, so the kid came back and rode him around. I had him ride him by the road. I had him ride him up and went, you know, as far as the kid from the herd and, and uh, all that. And I was like, you know, so my husband and I talked and and uh, I decided I would go ahead and, and ride him. As the kid was riding the horse in the arena, you know, my husband and I were talking. I'm, this guy had an attitude. He had an attitude. I think he thought we were just pirate kippers, not really buyers. So, like, as the kid was riding the horse around the arena, I, it was like me, my husband, and then the, this guy. So I said to my husband... And I said it loudly, not loudly, but I said it so that the, the guy could hear. I said, uh, I said, I really like him. And 
So I, I had hopes that he would think, oh, okay, you know, maybe she is a buyer. <laughs> anyway, um, when the kid, when the kid was done, or not when the kid was done, at, after I was done watching the kid, um, I decided to have, um, I decided I would, well, you know, my husband and I decided I could, I would go ahead and get on him. Um, I told, I told the guy, I said I would like to go ahead and ride him, so, um, I'd like to put my, my saddle on him, um, tack him up and ride him, and, uh, at that point he said, he said, he said, only if you hurry it along, I said, I said, well, I came here to look at him, and that includes riding him. And he's like, well, I got a bonfire to go to. Uh, it was 2, at that point, it was 2.30. It wasn't going to be dark until at least for another four or five hours. And I had gone that day because his daddy told me the bonfire was the next day. So that's why I was there that day. Anyway, I said, I said, um... I said, well, I'd like to, I said, in that case, uh, I'd like to just, I'll bring my trainer back another day, and hope, hopefully we can have more time. Um, and then at that point, he popped off at me. Listen here, you've just been rude from the moment when you got here, and he just went off on me that I was being rude. And, uh, and uh, I said, you know what, you've been rude since we got here, and I'm done. And I went ahead and took my halter and and uh, threw it in the back of my pickup, and we left. Um, I wanted to. I wanted. I. I really thought that we could maybe get that horse if everything checked out with my trainer, with my friend, whoever I brought to look at the horse again. Um, I was concerned that maybe he was older, but I didn't know for sure if he was older, but I liked him. I liked his personality, I liked his size, I liked his color, and I really liked him. And I, and I wanted to save him from that situation because I know damn well that guy was, wouldn't have gotten that wire out of that horse's tail, and I didn't want him out there laying down and then getting hurt with that wire, getting scraped with that wire still in his tail. And I wanted to save him and bring him home to a nice place to live out his life because he was a sweet boy. Um, but we left, and I cried a lot of the way home. A lot of the way home, I cried. Uh, these brokers, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll end this here, but I'll do another video about brokers and this whole process. Um, thanks, y'all.